Hello and ni hao. Welcome to Understanding China, brought to you live from the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu by Asia Pacific Group, an investment firm in Beijing. And I'm Michael North. Our producer in China is Xiaofang Zhou North. Through this series, we are meeting with key leaders in China, government, business, academia, education, the arts, about China today, its future, its hopes, its dreams, its plans in the world, and above all, its great and amazing people. We want to help our international audience to see China through Chinese eyes by talking direct to the people who are leading the largest nation and one of the most important nations in the world today. So we've spent the first three episodes of Understanding China looking at the One Belt, One Road economic development policy. It's a social and a cultural and a technological movement that is, has China investing in many nations all across the world. It's China reaching out to the world. Now, for this program, we're going to completely change our emphasis. Rather than China moving out across the world, this is China looking in upon itself, and especially to young people and to China's values, to China's idea of who it is, who the people are, what is important to the people of China from the, from the inside out. So we're, we're, we're with uh, Yu Su Mei, who is with the Attitudinal Healing Committee in Beijing. And Sumei, welcome to Think Tech. Very good to see you. Um, we would like to hear from you um, your interpretation of what is attitudinal healing. Just imagine we know nothing about the subject and we are just little babies learning. And we want to hear from you from China what is the importance, what is the essence of attitudinal healing? Mark 工作坊 就是现在有一个特别神奇的地方是，它可以通过普通人之间的相互支持，让我们彼此得到这种嗯力量，然后改变自己嗯的生活品质。嗯，就是它真的会让我们的现在其实是我们是我们的想法创造我们的世界。然
be sought after in China. Uh, so these workshops uh, obviously continue in 2014, 2015, 2016, including this year. Uh, and in the process, we realize that it is a well, it's a process and an, an idea and a concept that uh, allows normal people to support one another in the changing of their lives uh, and help them realize that their ideas, the concepts, and the way that they think about themselves, uh, it can change that. They can also change their world and obtain mm. a certain inner peace. Mm. Uh, it's a very new thing in, in China, and uh, it opens new doors for Chinese people. Uh, and it's very interesting, very uh, important work that is being done here. Well, you know, the, the method is new, but the key idea, the philosophy behind it, is as old as China itself. It goes back to Lao Tzu and before. It goes to the very root of Taoism. And what we're looking at is fundamental ideas that are coming back to China from around the world, but expressed in new ways. Would you agree, Sumei, that this is both very modern and very ancient? Yoke 自己的那个注意力都放在外在的事情上面节目里面会有这种团体支持小组，但是在国内这种形式真的非常新颖的，就像您说的，它好像确实是一个古老的方法，然后同时又特别现代的，对对对，我是非常同意这一点的。呃，Yes, uh, Mark, I absolutely agree with what you're saying. Uh, there's something that we need to understand here, and it is that for young people in China, uh, life can be uh, there. Young people in China have a lot of pressure, and the uh, of life that they have to go through is also very uh, quick, very fast paced. Uh, that means that people here in China cannot really relax or don't really have the time to just stop and consider uh, their inner selves, consider their inner lives, their psychological and uh, philosophical and spiritual lives. Uh, and even though all these ideas, as you've mentioned, might have existed in China in ancient times, uh, I think that their real implementation in China has started with uh, Jerry and his organization and his small workshops, these things that I've been doing. This is something that is completely new in China. Okay, so you, you mention uh, Jerry. We mean Dr. Gerald Jampolsky and his associate and longtime love of his life, Dr. Diane Serencione. They are leaders of the human potential movement in America and actually have been active throughout the world for decades um, to many countries across the world. And they only recently, in the last few years, started working in China and so reached out to Sumei. We have a short video that comes from the organization that they have built. It's called Attitudinal Healing. So Attitudinal Healing International made this short video and it'll explain to our listeners the basic concept behind this attitudinal healing movement. Attitudinal healing is a powerful yet simple method that guides people of all ages and circumstances to experience lasting love and inner peace. It helps heal the judgments, blame, shame, and self-condemnation that keeps us from real happiness. Attitudinal healing is based on the belief 
that it's not people or experiences from the past or even in the future that cause us to be upset. Rather, it's our thoughts, attitudes, and our judgments about them that cause us the distress. Healing results when we concentrate on changing our own attitudes rather than trying to change others. Guiding principles help us learn to look at pain from the past and fear of the future so we can choose to experience inner peace in the present. People from many cultures, faiths, and denominations, as well as those who follow no faith, participate in attitudinal healing. It doesn't tell you what to believe. Rather, it teaches you how to listen to your own inner wisdom and to make decisions based on love rather than fear. Attitudinal Healing pioneered the peer support group model and training which is now used in dozens of countries on six continents in numerous innovative ways which include relationships and education, community programs, business, hospitals, health and wellness, racial healing, and prisons. As we change our minds, we change our lives. As we heal ourselves, the world heals with us. So, you too, May, you are, have a very important professional position and you're responsible to a great many people and they're looking to you for leadership. I'm interested in hearing a little bit about Sume. Why are you doing this? Who are you? What brings you to this life? And why are you engaged in this work?其实我真的感受到了失语受是同一回事包括在做这个过程当中去年跟那个儿聚会那边有一个机缘去做那个乡村教师就是要支持到这个留守儿童整个这个过程就是好像越做那个那个爱被激发的那个能量被激发的越多所以紧接着他有后面我们这种产生了
start uh, falling down in the right place. Uh, in a project like that uh, for, uh, well, what she has called in Chinese, lost children, children without uh, families, children that have been abandoned, etc. Uh, she feels that it's a project that uh, where people can put a lot of energy in. In the future, uh, they are going to train with that organization 600 uh, additional countryside uh, teachers. Uh, because in China right now, the problem of uh, the lost children problem is a very important one. Uh, there is an estimated uh, 50 to 60,000 uh, such children that are in need of education. Um, so this is a very great opportunity for this organization to do something and help these people. And while they are helping and supporting uh, this youth, this Chinese youth, uh, it is also a very good opportunity for themselves to uh, learn more about themselves and understand themselves and, uh, well, grow with the children, basically. Very good. We're going to take a brief break, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cheryl Crozier-Garcia, the host of Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. Join us every other Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 4.30 when we discuss the impact of change on employees, employers, and the economy. Hi, my name is Seymour Kazimirsky. I have a show called Seymour's World at Think Tech Hawaii. Our job is opening minds and facilitating conversations. Every show we have is different. I have no idea what I'm going to be saying or what I'm going to be doing or who my guest is going to be, but I can guarantee you one thing. You will enjoy it and we will have lots of fun together. Aloha from Seymour's World. Hello, I'm Crystal from Quok Talk. I've got a new show here. You've got to tune in, check out my topics on sensitive, provocative female issues. So Tuesday mornings, 10 o'clock. Don't miss it. It's going to be fun and dangerous. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world, scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, a way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for Likeable Science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. All right, we're back now with uh, John Jungwe, who is also very much part of the at attitudinal healing work, and he works directly with the Village Care Project. Uh, Jungwe, very good to meet you. Very good to see you. Ni hao from Honolulu. I have a question for you. Ni hao. You're working with uh, children in something called the Village Care Project. Can you describe to us that work? and the importance that it has for the people that you're serving in, in Beijing? Okay。嗯。就讲一下这个项目吧。OK。嗯。呃，因为我觉得我们这个项目它服务的这个人群呢，是这些乡村教师。但我们希望通过他们影响的呢，是他们所教的这些学生。那因为从我自身的经历，因
，能够帮助到这些教师，他们重拾自己当初的梦想，也能够把自己的爱再重拾回来。他同时通过他们，才能够帮助到这些孩子。我觉得可能从北京作为一个首都来讲，可能跟这些人在地理上离得太远。但是如果从一个有责任心的公民的角度来讲，我觉得无论在哪里，无论住在哪里，我们的连接都是一样。所以这个也是一个我觉得非常了不起的事情。这是我看《哈利波特》的一个收获。Nicholas, can you translate so far? We want to hear Nicholas what what Zheng Yue is saying. Help us. Yes. So this this project, as Mr. John says, is a project that is actually meant to service uh, teachers in the countryside, countryside uh, teacher. Oh. Uh, and through influencing these countryside teacher, we want to influence the children, the students that are in uh, faraway places in China that are hard of access. Mm. Actually, Mr. Mr. Zhang's uh, mother used to be a countryside teacher, and oh. through her experience as a countryside. Teacher, he also has uh, he has learned that a countryside teacher such as her mother can influence students like this for uh, a period of about ten years. So this is a very long influence that these people have. Uh -huh. uh, in uh, China, though, um, it's a little bit uh, difficult because these places are far away. So even if these countryside uh, teachers have uh, are, are full of love. Full of energy. The fact that these places are so far away and sometimes technologically very much less advanced uh, makes it a lot harder for them to actually uh, persist in their work. So this project is meant to help them realize the dream and help them through uh, pass the test of time, and uh, through doing this, obviously affect these children, uh, help these children. Um, we. Mr. Zhang feels that uh, Beijing as a capital is important, but it is definitely far from the places that are actually concerned in the project. Mm. Uh, nevertheless, he feels that as a responsible citizen of China, as any responsible citizen of China would feel, uh, it's a very important project. So people, uh, no matter where they are in Beijing, in these places, uh, they have been working very hard uh, to contribute to the project. Mm. and. Um, Mr. John wanted to say finally that uh, this connection that relies us uh, is something actually that he has uh, learned from uh, his reading of Harry Potter. <laughs> this transmission of love and how we are all uh, connected in this way uh, mm -hmm. was something that was inspired to him by uh, Miss uh, Rowling. <laughs> so, Zheng Yue, very interesting. When you start to work with young children in China today, what is their most important need that they're asking that you can fulfill? What is in their heart that you need to that you need to address uh, very first? I觉得这是最基本也是最真实的一个需求 所以我觉得我们我们的能力很有限，我们做不了什么。我们也不可能把这个父母和他们绑在一起，这些我们也做不到这一点。但我们希望能够传播一点东西，就是传播一种方法，传播一种认知，然后能够让人有可能尽可能
。从另外一个角度，输出孩子在这个空白期间，也能够得到弥补那些缺失的哈。Okay. Okay, Mr. John said that actually he believes that、uh, all kids in the world, all children in the world, no matter in China, rich or poor, or no matter what st status,、uh, all of them need、uh, love from their parents. They need parents love. Uh, love. Uh, he feels that this is something that is most basic and also most、uh, real in terms of the need of their children.、Uh, now. They need parents to、uh, be with them, to accompany them,、uh, to、uh, help them through their lives. But unfortunately, in、uh, well, to speak of this organization, this project in Chinese society today,、uh, it's not always possible for parents to accompany these children through、uh, their growth.、Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes, from a very very early age, they need to separate from their own、uh, child. So.、Uh, Again, such a reality.、Uh, what this organization can do、uh, sometimes feels very、uh, little. Obviously, they cannot <laughs> always reunite parents and children. This can be a very difficult task. But what they can do is transmit an idea, a belief for these parents to try and spend a little bit more time with these children, spend as much time as they can、uh, with their children to answer the needs. And when this is still impossible, another thing that this can do is try to make.、Uh, The、uh, countryside teachers that are working with this organization realize that when they go in these places, they have actually a second role, which is a temporary role of a temporary parent for these children、uh, to accompany these children through their growth while their parents are not、uh, in a position to do so. And、uh, well, this uh, love uh, that the children might obtain in this way is.、Uh, The most basic and most real need that our organization is trying to address now. That's very interesting. That this is becoming so important and so widespread, and it's and it's expanding rapidly throughout China to both urban and rural settings. This kind of deep care for the inner child, and I think it's it's typical of how many ideas that begin in the West and go to China they get changed by China. They get reinterpreted. They get reshaped. They get reformed. They get expanded. They have a different psychological and cultural base. Their essence remains the same, but they come out very different. And it's fascinating for us to see in America how those ideas of psychology and arts and culture and economics and technology we see it in all these different fields. So I want to thank、uh, Liu Sumei and、uh, Zhang Junwei for being here. I want to thank. Uh, Lin Fan Lin for his continuing support through Beijing Emoza and his media company, and thank Joe Shaofang and David Castellano for making it all happen at the other end. So until the next time,、uh, aloha and zaijian, xie xie to our friends in Beijing from Think Tech Hawaii.